Okay, this is Prophet Rob and I will be coming at you. Uh just want to uh touch on <clears throat> a video that I want to share with you all. And this is concerning um let me tell you something that I have noticed. Since I have noticed the Hebrew Israelite camps. I notice that they're they are, they are modifying their behavior in a way for the better, okay? But in a way for the worse, okay? I notice that with some of the groups, there is not as much name calling as it was four years ago. I notice that. I notice that. Yeah, I'm not just I'm not just here to dog people out, y'all, and just say bad things about them, or derogatory things about them, or negative things about them, or critical things about them. That, that, no. But I notice that their behavior is being modified. I notice that. That that that, that did not miss me. I notice that their behavior is being modified. Not all of them, but some of them. They're toning it down a little bit. A little less profanity. And some a lot less profanity. They're not calling women by the B word and H word like they were four years ago. I notice those type of things. I'm not just going to come in, come on here and diatribe about what they're doing wrong. I'll, I'll mention some things that they're doing right. I'll mention some things they're doing right. I, I have nothing to lose by telling the truth. I have nothing to lose by telling the truth. I'm very unbiased. I, I, I really don't have a bias, per se. I really don't. Now, you say, well, how is it good but bad? Well, see, one thing about behavior modification, it doesn't change the heart. Ah, uh, you see? It, it doesn't change your heart. You know, somebody might think you are nicer. They may, it may appear that you are toning it down. You might be a little more tolerable to other individuals that you normally wouldn't be. But guess what? The heart isn't changed. So in that respect, it's not good. And for these Hebrew Israelite groups, the heart hasn't changed. They're using, they're using more docile speech. More docile word selections. But guess what? The heart is still corrupt. And, and, and hey, y'all. I'm not saying that nothing could good come out of them having a corrupt heart reading the Bible. I'm not saying that. I do believe that the word of the Most High has power. I do believe that. Philippians 1.15. Let's get that. Let's get that. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. Let's get that. It says here, some indeed preach Yehoshua even for envy and strife. I'm going to explain to you how is it that some guys that are not converted, some good could come out of them reading and sharing scriptures with people, even in a negative way. How can any good come out of that? I'm going to break that down for you. Some indeed preach Yehoshua even for envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Yehoshua of contention. Don't that sound like Hebrew Israelites? 
Money waste camps, absolutely. But some good can still come out of it. Watch this. Not sincerely. See, when it says sincerely, it doesn't mean that you just mean what you say. It means that you are on point in the spirit with your Hosho spirit. So you can you could you could teach people the Bible and be cussing them out. That's not sincerely. Even though you mean to cuss people out in your, your music or your preaching or your teaching. But it's not sincerely in context to who your Hosho is. That's how sincerity is measured, not by how much you meant, the, meant what you said. You see what I'm saying? Some indeed preach Yehoshua even of envy and strife. Some people just preach Yehoshua just to be the top teacher, to know the most scriptures, to have the most to say, to get the deepest breakdown, get the most accolades. Envy and strife. And some also of goodwill. Some people do it for goodwill. And one preacher, Hoshua, of contention and not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my bonds. Some people preach Yehoshua just so the apostles and prophets can be killed, shunned. Marginalized. But the other of love and knowing that I am set forth for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, whether you are a pretender and a hypocrite and you preach the word, a devil. Or you're preaching it in truth. Guess what he says? Yehoshua is preached. In other words, the bottom line, Yehoshua is being preached. Even if it's insincerely. And I therein do rejoice. Yea, I will rejoice. He said, I'm going to be happy about that thing. I'm going to be happy about that thing. Just because Yehoshua is being preached. Now, although the ones preaching it out of insincerity, some of those are not going to ever be converted and they're going to be lost. Guess what? There are going to be people that come in as a result of those people preaching, even though they was never going to make it. They were cursed of the most high. As a matter of fact, everything that they were sharing with everybody else that may get other people saved and in the kingdom, every word they were preaching, guess what it was? It was a word, a nail in the coffin for their damnation. Y'all, it's always been like that. In Christianity, it's been like that. In Israel, it's been like that. In the Catholic Church, it's like that everywhere. Most people are preaching the gospel to their damnation. Every word they say, every syllable they utter is a nail in the coffin for their damnation. Isn't that sad? You did all that preaching. Lord, Lord, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I? Didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I cast out devils in your name? Yeah, every devil you cast out brought you closer to damnation. Woo! You, know, you, you hear that out there, you Holy Ghost people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every demon you cast out, every, every Bible that you did, guess what? It was one step closer to hell every time you did it. You just wasn't sincere. You didn't have the spirit of the most high. You had a form of godliness. Denying the powers thereof. So, <clears throat> I want to show you another example of denying the power thereof. Okay, what happened here? Oh, how did that pop up? I want to show you another example of denying the power thereof. I hope this comes across pretty good. The sound quality. What shall we say then? Is there an unrighteousness with God? Let me go back a little bit. What shall we say then? Is there an unrighteousness with God? You gotta hear what this man is saying. And, and, and all the one West camps teach this. It's, this is one of the most satanic doctrines you can teach. Amen. 
how you go, right? Fear of God. To use the word of this salvation, sin. Now, I'm going to tell you what he just said, and I hope you heard it. He said, what is God going to do about white people? I, you know, it's really sad that the only people that black people are really concerned about is white people. They always ask, what's God going to do about white people? I mean, you got Hebrew Israelites that are obsessed with white people because all they do is bang on Esau. That's, that's the gospel, banging on Esau. And you got the people who love Esau. And all they want to know is what's going to happen to Esau or the white people. I'm not convinced that all white people are Esau. I'm just not convinced of that. Okay? I think it's quite silly. That's like saying all black people are African and all African are Israelites. And I, no, 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 no. All white people can't be Esau. But I tell you one thing, they most of them are certainly allies. So if they're not Esau, they, they certainly allies, most of them, not all. But hold on. The guy's even wringing his hands when he asks this question. What's going to happen with white people? It's just so sad, y'all. It's so sad that we just so smitten with Stockholm Syndrome to one extreme or the other. Either to the Hebrew Israelite extreme or to the Christian extreme. Both of them are two people who are obsessed with Esau. Who they call Esau or white people. It's really sickening. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Only a certain people. That's still popular. What do you mean by certain people? By a certain nation of people. So you don't think everybody? What? Let's first deal with John 3 16. 3 45. Well, what do you think the people are? I'm not about to put that all that down. Oh, wait a minute. I went back too far. I went back too far. All nations before him are as many. Of repentance to all the people of Israel. All the people of who? Of Israel. Hey, go ahead. But that's because the nice guy delegated him to go. That's all I want. That's all I want. Yeah, I, I, I want to get to a specific thing. Yeah. Yeah. Use the word of this salvation. It's a specific thing right here in the text. The children of the stock of Abraham. This is the word of salvation unto you. And then we have Matthew 1, 21, and the other and these are young brothers too, y'all. These are some young men, and look at the doctrine they about to. Somebody talk to them that they about to teach these people. It's the book of Romans, chapter nine, verse three, right? For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, the brothers, to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, and the glory, and the covenant, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. That all pertains to Israel. That's plain and simple right there. The right? Okay. What this thing don't want to pause right away. Uh, what is this thing don't want to pause right away? Uh, what is this thing don't want to pause right away? Yeah. All those things do pertain to Israel. But Israel was then supposed to be the depository 
to dole those things out to the rest of the nation. Yes, it is true that those things were specifically given and they are they, they are specifically uh, attributed to the nation of Israel. Why? Because they are the nation of priests and kings. They are the gods of the earth. Now, if the Most High God gave it to us, and he made us gods on the earth, and he's our God in heaven, like the Bible says in, I want to say 1 Corinthians, uh, maybe 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 5. Let me see. Let me see. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Okay. So let me, let me, let me, let me, let me hold on, hold on, y'all. Don't, 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 don't. Don't go crazy on me now. Okay. I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me see here. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna have to find that one there. I'm gonna have to find that. Let me see. Is it five eleven or eleven five? Let me see here. I'm gonna try to find this right away. Okay. I get all my Corinthians messed up, mixed up anyway. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, it's 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 First Corinthians eight five, eight five. It says here, for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. But to us, talking about the Israelites, but to us there is but one God. So if there is a Elohim in heaven, and he de designated the nation of Israel to be the viceroy on earth, gods of earth, judges of earth, kings of the earth, priests of the earth, he, he must be Elohim of the earth, just like it says here. He said, look, look, for the world, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5, for though there be that are called gods, plural, and whether, whether in heaven or in earth, you see? So there are gods on earth. There are gods on the earth. If we are made in his image, that means whatever he gives us, guess what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to give it to them. We're their gods. We are the gods to all the other nations, like the Bible tells us. What? Psalms 82 6? Let's read that. Psalms 82 6, I believe. said, ye are gods. Now, I don't know how, how you're going to confuse that. I know Christians don't believe this, but how do you mess that up? How do you say I'm not reading that out of context? I'm not reading it in context. I have said, ye are gods. Little g. O D S. And all of you are children of the Most High. Oh, you said, well, that's Old Testament. Okay, let's go to John 10, 34. Let's go to John 10, 34. And after that, after that, let's go to Zechariah, I think, just chapter 8, verse 5. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's go. I might as well hit this real good. This is, this is, a, this is a, a doctrine that most people's soul have to reject because we have a Christian background. So I, I just got to beat the song. I mean, John chapter 10, verse 34, I believe. Yahushua is saying unto them, Is it not written in your law? Your law, not the law for all the other nations, 
the law of the nation of Israel. Is it not written in your law that I said you are gods? Where did he say that he were, we were gods at? In Psalms 82.6. What else did he say that we were gods at? In 1 Corinthians chapter, there were gods on earth. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. Where else in the Bible? In the New Testament, now, New Testament Christians, I know you hate this stuff. I know you hate these type of scriptures because they, you know, they just cut you. And they're, Hebrew, they're actually Hebrew Israelites that hate these type of scriptures either. They don't want to hear that we are no gods, some gods, and we live in the ghetto. But the only Israelites that are gods in the earth today are those that keep the commandments of the Most High and they are converted. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 8, verse 5, I believe. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 8, verse 5. If I could find it. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 5. I think that's what I want. No, maybe it's Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. I be messing up sometimes, but you know, it's all right. I'll get there. Don't worry about me now. Let me see. Zechariah chapter. I'm probably looking right at the scripture. Well, I can't I can't put my finger right on the scripture right now, but it says the house of David shall be as God. I know I'm looking right at the scripture. I can't find it. I can't put my finger on it. I can't put my... I'm probably looking right at it. But that's the scripture I want to... That, uh, let me see here. Let me, let me let me just Google it. The house of David shall be as God. Oh, I cannot remember where that's at. Zechariah 5, 8, Zechariah 8, 5. I'm probably looking right at the scripture. Oh, this, this computer's freezing up bad. Let's see. I'm surprised I don't have that highlighted. But anyway, the Bible says that the house of David is going to be as God and as the angel of the Lord before him. Y'all, you know, there's a scripture. There's a scripture in, uh, I want to say, Isaiah chapter 54. Let, let's look at that one. Let, let, let's, let's just look at that one. Uh, Isaiah chapter 54. Let me see. Look at this. Let me turn the light on in here. It's getting dark in here. Sun is going down. Okay, it says here, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall. Now, that's not what I want.
I want the scripture where it says that we're going to own people. Uh, I know you don't like these scriptures, but it's still in the Bible. Even if you don't like it, it's still in the Bible. Yeah, we're going to own people. They're going to be our possession. I'm probably looking at that too. And all thy children shall be taught of Yahuwah, and great shall be the peace of thy children. I'm reading Isaiah chapter Isaiah 54, and I started at verse 13. Let's just keep reading. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear and and from fear and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, talking about Israel, black folk, shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith. Now, there's another scripture I wanted. And all that children, oh, I read that. Okay. I want that scripture where it says that we're gonna own people. I, I know black I know people don't our, our Stockholm uh, 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 patients don't like these this type of language, but we're gonna own people, y'all. We really are going to own people. They're gonna be like our possessions. They really are. They were actually always created to be our possessions. Even if sin never entered into the world, they, they was going to be under us. Just like we under the Most High. We are going to be their Most High in the earth. The nation of Israel is going to be the Most High in the earth. And the Most High is going to be our God. Of course, he's over everybody. But there's a pecking order. Um, okay, let me see. For there is... As the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. For whose sake? Israel's sake, not the other, not Christians. This ain't talking about no Christians. None of these scriptures apply to Christians. Christianity is one of the mountains that's standing in our way. For the mountains shall be departed, and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Who is thee? It's not Christians. It's Israel. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith Yahuwah, that have mercy on me. That reminds me of Hebrew 8.8. 8. Zechariah uh of thirty-one, thirty-one. All thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphire. Let me go up a little bit. Uh, let me just start at verse one. Isaiah fifty-four, verse one. Sing, O barren, thou that breaketh forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children that of the married wife, saith Yahuwah. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtain of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Thou shalt break. <laughs> thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left, <laughs> and thy seed shall inherit. This is the scripture. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. All of them, the remnant of Eden too. Yes, it's gonna be a remnant of Eden. Yeah, all the leaders are going to be cut off, but there's going to be a remnant left. Just like there's a remnant of Israel left, the remnant of 
Israel left is a type of all other nations that's going to be left that ever kept us captive. He said, I was set in the midst of thee and afflicted in poor people, and they shall trust in the name of Yahuwah. He going to do that for all nations. Well, he, he did that for us, and guess what? We going to do that for them. That's the picking order. Okay? For thy maker is thy husband. Okay, but that's, that's basically it. That's the scripture I wanted. It is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 3, where it says that we're going to inherit and possess people. Just like it says in uh, 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 Isaiah 14. Let's go there. Isaiah 14.1 For Yahuwah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. This is a future prophecy. This is a last day prophecy. Yes, in the Old Testament, but this is a New Testament prophecy. It's a prophecy for the New Testament. But it's just in the Old Testament. For Yahuwah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land and the strangers, just like we read over there in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 3. And set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them. Yeah, strangers are going to be joined. Not just strangers in Israel. Strangers in Israel being joined with us is a type, a forecast of the strangers that's going to be joined to us in the world. Mm, see? It's a typology. Um, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, Yaakov. And the people shall take them. Yeah, we're going to take them, and look what it says. And bring them to their place in the house of Jacob, Israel, shall possess them. So in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 3, it says that we are going to inherit them. In Isaiah chapter 14 verse 2, it says we're going to possess them. No Christians don't like this. But God love everybody. Everybody equal. No, everybody will be equal, y'all. Everybody not even equal now. He shall take them and possess them in the land of Yahuwah for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives. Watch this. This is how I know that some Edomites are going to be left. They're going to take them captives whose captives they were. All nations. They shall take them captives whose captives they were. They, that where, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Is Edom one of our oppressors? Well, guess what? We're going to rule over them too. Now, Esau, you don't get out of it that quick. Now, whoever you are, you don't get out of it that quick. We're going to bring you right to Israel and we're going to possess you in our land just like you possessed us. Ah, hallelujah. In your land. Hey! <laughs> We served you in your land. Guess what, Edom? You're going to serve us in our land forever and ever and ever, ever. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. But that, that's not even why I'm here, y'all. That's not even why I'm here. Look at this, y'all. Let's get back to the real issue. I want to show you how satanic the doctrine is that one West Kemp's teach. They are actually teaching Satanism. This is pure witchcraft what these young men are teaching. I know they don't know, but ignorance is, ignorance is no excuse of the law. They are teaching Satanism. And it's really doing a job on their character. I hope and pray that these young men come out of this. I don't wish ill on them. I hope they come out of it. Watch this. With Esau, have I hated? From the very beginning. Mm -hmm. 
what shall we say then? Is there an unrighteousness with God? Is God unrighteous to that? Because he already hated Esau and he's saying just to hate him? God forbid. Now, you, you heard what he said? Well, he said to Moses, he said, God created Esau just to hate him. If you make a video game right now, you got good guys and bad guys. You got those Horrible analogy. A video game, he's saying that we are programmed to be good and we're programmed to be evil. He's saying that we don't have no conscience. He's saying that we don't have no spirit. When you make a video game, it don't have a spirit. It's just some software. That's all it is. That's all it is. And so he's saying that we're basically robots, and God's just playing a little game with us. With good guys and bad guys. Y'all, you see, they are, they are making these young men and the elders that taught them from one west, all those seven seven guys, guess what? They are teaching the character of Satan, and they are attributing it to the Most High. That's all this is, y'all. This is witchcraft and sorcery, y'all. Black magic, white magic, gray magic. It's all of that. Everything these guys are about to say right here is the is the bedrock of Satanism. It really is. You can't get no more satanic than this. And guess what they're doing? They're teaching Satanism from the Bible. If white people were able to teach Satanism from the Bible, what makes you think that Hebrew Israelites? Hebrew Israelites are the ones who taught white people how to teach Satanism from the Bible. And that's why we went into Captivity. They got it from us. When was the first one that started abusing the oracles of the Most High? The Bible tells us in Romans 3, 1, that he gave us the oracles of God. He said that we are the oracles of God. What? 1 Corinthians chapter... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter... Hold on a second. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 3, I want to say. Let me see. Let me see. I get my Corinthians messed up. So it's probably 2 Corinthians. Hold on, hold on, I get it. I'm fumbling today, boy. Let me see, I'm probably looking right at the thing. I can't put my finger on what I'm looking for right now. But uh, I don't even know what I was trying to say now. But anyway, let's just keep going. Watch this, y'all. There is something I want to read, though, from Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, I think, verse 25. <laughs> 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 No, but when I say that, I'm going to say y'all. For those of us, white people, other people, I say other races. 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 I I'm saying that because 
you love God the mm-hmm. same way that you are, the same way you love God. Okay. So seven hymns of our life, and ask forgiveness. Why do you allow us to have that experience with him, not everyone else on the other ring? In that pair of them, even though they may be living the same life that we live. Now, the question that the young man asked was really good. He, because this is the common sense answer that most people come to. You know, why would he want to really know why would the Most High make a group of people that he hate? Now, Hebrew Israelites, they swear that God makes people just to hate them. No matter what, how good they are, even if they're nicer than the people that he made to love, he's, he just hate them. See, that's Satan we're talking about. That's not the most high. See, a, a lot of times, you don't know it, but those that don't like Yehoshua and those that don't like the most high, they always give him the characteristics of Satan. Only Satan would make something just to hate it. I'm going to prove it to you from the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. For thou lovest all, uh oh, oh boy. Thou lovest all the things that are. You love know all the things that are. You don't say, oh, I think of Israel. No. I, he loves all things that are, and of course, nothing which thou hast made. Nothing. Now, I can show you in the Bible where the Most High say he hates Israel. I can show you scripture in the Bible where the Most High says he hates Israel. Most Hebrew Israelites not going to bring that out. Not when they bring out no Romans 9.13. They ain't going to bring that scripture up. Bring those two scriptures up side by side. Yeah. Jacob and Noah, Esau hate, and then show them the scripture over there in Jeremiah, I think chapter 7. Let me see if I can find that. I'm striking out so much now. I'm almost scared to look for any scriptures now. Okay, that's uh, uh, Jeremiah 7, maybe 13, something like that. Let's see here. Jeremiah 14, 8. Look what it says. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Right there he says he hate Israel. Right there. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jer- Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 8. Right there he says he hates Israel. He's, he comes straight out. I, I don't even add words. I say exactly what it's, the scripture says. He hates Israel. He says, my heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. Crieth out against me, therefore have I hated it. So now you can say, Jacob I hate, Esau I hate. But they're not going to say that. Because they have a narrative that they have to settle you into. Now, did the Most High make Jacob to hate him? Because he clearly hates him here. Hmm. See... This stuff ain't adding up. They just be splicing stuff together, y'all. They be doing Jedi mind tricks with scriptures. That's all they doing. You got to really be careful. I don't care if a person... You got to be more careful of a person that say they're a Hebrew Israelite and a Christian than anything on earth. If you come from a background and tradition like I do, those are the most dangerous people with the Bible. Hebrew Israelites and Christians. They really are. They like neck and neck. No, nah, I won't say neck and neck. Hebrew Israelites are way worse. Christians, we already know that that's paganism. But the form of godliness that Hebrew Israelites have is far more subtle and nuanced than Christians. And it's far more scriptural base than the errors that are in Christianity. It really is. It it really is. So, we read 
reading in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 24, where it says, Thou lovest all the things that are, yeah, even Esau. Do, do, do Esau exist? Well, he said he loved him. Now I'm showing a scripture here where the Most High says he loves Esau. Dang. How did I do that? How did I do that? By the Spirit, y'all. It's by the Spirit. The reason why Hebrew Israelites can't see this is because they don't want to see it. They're hiding stuff just like Christians do. Christians hate. Christians. Christians. Uh, he had black Jesus, not black Jesus, but Yehoshua, black Yehoshua from us, and we never could find him. And Hebrew Israelites, guess what they're doing? They're hiding the love of the Most High from us by saying the Most High always, he actually created Esau to hate him. They're hiding the love of God. But they look up to one over the first John chapter five verse three and first John chapter three verse four and five. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. But they're breaking the commandments by saying that the most high never loved Esau. Never, never. And I'm gonna prove to you from the Bible that the most high didn't always hate Esau. Because these people, I, I don't even want to go here, but <laughs> it's just, <sighs> but I know I'm like a little boy standing on the shore trying to hold back the water because that's how much error that these Hebrew Israelites teach. And, and yes, I am an Israelite. Yes, I am an Israelite. Okay. Yes, I do love my people, but I hate the errors that they teach. They're, they're opening up hell for us. Let's look at Genesis. Um, let's look at Genesis chapter. I think five is what I want. Genesis chapter four. Look at this. I want to prove to you from the Bible that the Most High didn't always hate Cain. Look at this. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. And, and Yahuwah said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? Yeah, 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 uh, 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 uh. Esau found no place of repentance, just like Cain didn't find no place of repentance. Why didn't Cain find no place of repentance? Because he didn't choose to do well. It's not because the Most High programmed him that way. Stop that stuff, y'all. Stop making God look like a demon. He, you could tell that Cain had choice. Just like Esau had choice. But unto Cain in his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very raw, and his countenance fell. But look what the Most High told him. And the Yahuwah said unto Cain, Why art thou raw? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost well, that means he could do well. Shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee, shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Okay? So Cain was supposed to rule over his brother. Rule over, over, rule his brother. But guess what? He wasn't accepted as the chosen. He wasn't. Same thing with Esau, y'all. Yeah, the only reason why Esau didn't find no place of repentance 
because he his heart was hardened. And, and yes, the Bible do say that the Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart. But all that means is, y'all, that the Most High, the sun that shines on the righteous and the unrighteous, guess what it's doing to some people? It's hardening some people's heart and softening some people's heart. In other words, what you do with time, it depends on, yes, time is from the Most High. Is, are some people's heart being hardened through by through, over time? Yeah, but it's not because the Most High is hardened in their heart. Most High is giving them time for their heart to be hardened. Why? Because they won't repent. That's how the Most High hardens people's hearts. That's how the Most High makes one vessel for honor and another vessel for dishonor. You see? He's not arbitrarily hardening people's heart like and just programming them to be lost. You can see that with the, with the with the cornucopia of scriptures that I just brought forth. Look at this. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter eleven. For thou lovest all the things that are. God only loves Israel. That kills that. I just cut. All the one west camps, all the top teachers in Israel, I just slaughtered them right now. They're just a heap of dead bodies right now. For thou lovest all the things that are, and of course nothing. He, he's even he's even adding he's even adding exclamation which thou hast made. Now watch this. For never wouldest thou have made anything if thou hast hated it. I heard IUIC give a teaching on this, and I really should have did a, 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 a video on them teaching that and commenting on it. You should have seen how they was twisting this. You should have seen how they was twisting this. It was the most demonic thing I've ever seen. For never wouldst thou have made anything if thou hatest it. And how could anything have endured if thou had not, if it had not been my will? If if the most high hates something, that means it's out of his will. And he says, How could something endure if it doesn't, if it's not according to his will? Or been preserved, how could it be sustained if not called by thee? But thou spareth all, and they are thine. What's another word for sparing? You have grace. Oh, I know we don't like that. Not for you, so. But thou spareth all, for they are thine. Oh, Yahuwah, thou loveth her, lover of souls. Hey, come here, son. Stand here, because you're moving too fast. Just stand there. Just stand there. You know, knocking people down. Just stand there for about, count to ten, and then you can go. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> thank you. Uh, so, let's look at this video. I hope the audio comes across clear, y'all. You got to hear what they about to tell this young man. Boy, this thing is lagging. He wanted to get you done. What did you say? Go ahead. But a God that she was mercy. So I did. I don't care what he did. Who's that guy for? I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the God. I'm reading this. Okay, okay, okay. So it don't matter what you did, no matter what you did, how bad you wanted. I choose. I don't care about what you want. The guy cannot believe what he's hearing. Common sense. The root block of common sense is hitting this guy. He's like, wait a minute, could you say that again? This sounds like a real rational guy. The guy with the girl. He knows something is wrong with this. Just real close, let's get my cell phone. Right here, right here. 
Let's just get my cell phone real quick. I want to make sure this audio comes across real good. You, even if the video don't come across. I, I, the name of this group is called Light of Israel. There's another proper Hebrew Israelite group, you know. Just, just bear with me for a little bit, and I'm going to get my phone. Because I, I really want y'all to hear this real good, because the resources on this computer is... Uh, Mm. Okay, let me see here. Okay. I want this audio to come across real clear. Okay. Okay, it looks like it's Okay, let's see if this thing kicked on. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, y'all. You all? Let me see. 16. Let me see where it's supposed to be. Uh, let's go 16. Right there. I want to make sure you hear what I'm hearing. much you want to love the most high he created you to be hated this is gospel. Now, this is the gospel of demons y'all demons have taught this down and passed it see you can convince people of anything you can convince you can get these guys human beings can convince people of anything about the most high this is one of, this is the worst thing that you could convince a person of that the most high has the character of Satan. Now you don't know that no, they don't know that. It don't matter. It's still the character of Satan. 
God don't care how much you love him, how much you show you you love him, how much you pray to him, how much you love his people. He's just made you so he can hurt you, so he can kill you. All of your love that you're going to give to him, he's going to pay it back with murder, pain, and torture. That's what Hebrew Israelites actually teach, y'all. I'm not being here. I'm not hyping this up. Hebrew Israelites believe that there can be people on earth that the Most High created just to torture them, just to kill them, just to suck their blood out, just to take a bath in their blood like a vampire. But Hebrew Israelites believe this, and guess where they got it from? The devil. They got it from our ancestors. Our ancestors was teaching the same thing. Teaching doctrines of devils. Hebrew, Israelites have always been teaching that the devil was God. Look in the wilderness. They had been bowing down to Baal. And they said, these be your gods that brought you out of Egypt. A demon brought you out of Egypt. They was doing this way back in Moses' day. So this shouldn't be a shock to you. Hebrew Israel, Israelites love worshiping demons. We've always been into demon worship. And we most often time we do it while holding the Bible in our hand. While quoting scriptures. Yeah. But we're not talking about statues, laws, and commandments a hundred times. Yeah, we do that. We've always done that. That's how we ended up. We didn't end up in captivity just because we were worshiping other gods. We ended up in, in captivity because we said that our God was a demon. We gave him the attributes of demons. We've always done that, y'all. This is something easy for us to slip into. And, and look what these guys are teaching. You can't believe this guy said that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's very unintelligent. He has a strong mind. This guy right here has a really strong mind. He said, Oh, no, I know, I don't believe that. He respectfully disagreed with that. He said, yeah, that, that, because he knows that that doesn't make sense. He may not understand all the ramifications that I understand. See, I already know what these guys are doing. They're giving, they're saying that Satan is God. That's what, and, and, and y'all, don't be surprised if one day a Hebrew Israelite group pop up and they actually come straight out and say that. These guys are saying it, uh, taking a backdoor approach of saying it. Don't, don't be surprised. Our ancestors have always said that, that God was Satan. These be your gods that brought you up out of Egypt. Don't, don't, be, don't be surprised if they say that God is a demon. Don't, don't be surprised. Don't be shocked at all. Matter of fact, start expecting that. I'm prophesying that right now. Start expecting for Hebrew Israelites. They're already saying it, actually. These guys are actually saying it. And they're not even smart enough to even know that. They're not spirit-led enough to even know that. They're just regurgitating what they've been taught. Thank you. 
You heard that? He raised up an entire nation of people just to kill him. Does that sound like what uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 11 verse 24 and 25 says? No, it doesn't, y'all. He raised up a nation just to kill him. Yeah, that's what Satan would do. They're blaspheming. All of this is blasphemy. And very few Hebrew Israelites are going to be able to come out of doctrine this powerful. It, 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 it's just not. Because they think they know so many scriptures, so it, it's, they're locked in with scriptures. And see, that's the strong delusion that the Most High sends them. They have the Bible just like I have the Bible, but I don't have this view that they have. It's their own hearts that locks them into the strong delusion. And the Most High just allows it to metastasize. They don't have to stay on this path. They can get off anytime they want, but they're not. Because there's too many people teaching this. And most people are sheepish. Bear with me. I'm still here. He said he don't care about everybody. The most I don't care about everybody. That Satan don't care about everybody. This is the Jedi mind trick. This is the blasphemy. This is the witchcraft, the sorcery. Y'all don't think that this is not a serious thing. This is very serious. We at the end of our captivity and our people start teaching that God is Satan. They start attributing the character of Satan to the most high. That's how you say that God is Satan. That's the way that you say directly that God is Satan. You attribute the characteristics of Satan to the most high. He just, he just, he just cut the guy right there. He said, "Did God warn him?" And the guy really didn't want to say that the Most High warned Pharaoh, but the Most High warned Pharaoh ten times. Hello. He warned Pharaoh ten times. And each warning hardened his heart. The warning didn't have to harden his heart, y'all. The warnings could have did what? They could have, it could have, he could have made another choice. So Pharaoh wasn't programmed to do what he did. He did it by choice. He could have let him go way before the first plague came. When Moses first came to him, I wrote in Genesis chapter, I mean Exodus chapter 7. He could have let him go. But he really likes to teach all of this stuff that people teach from the Talmud. See, this type of stuff that they teach, and I'm not going to blame the Jews for this. I'm going to blame our ancestors for this in the wilderness. That's who I'm going to blame for all this satanic teaching. I'm not gonna blame Esau. I'm not gonna blame the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the, no, 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 no. I'm gonna blame uh, uh, Janus, Jambres. That's who I'm gonna blame. Our ancestors in the wilderness, Aaron. That's who I'm gonna blame. I'm gonna pick them to blame. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was a good point that he made. That was a good point that the young man made. He said, if the Most High warned him, that proves that he loved him. Yeah. That proves that he loved him. He didn't love him more than Israel, but he did love him. He did care about him. That's why he gave him warnings. And the reason why you give a person warning because they have a, a will, a free will. But Hebrew Israel, I teach, no. Nope. Nobody has a free will. Israel don't have a free will. We just serve them just because we want to. Well, why so many of our people are whores and, and, and deadbeats and murderers and, and, and crackheads? And I know what Hebrew Israel, I say, God programmed you to smoke crack. Just like he programmed Esau to hate Esau. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, this is some diabolical stuff. See, people like that have an excuse for not serving the Most High the way they're supposed to. Why? Because they programmed to do everything that they do, right or wrong. Wow. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. <laughs> I can tell this this lady right here, she's been fine all her life. Look how beautiful she is. She's an old lady and she's super beautiful. And that's why she just walk up and just start talking. Because she knows she look good. She know a lot of men want to talk to her. But that guy, he just cut her. He's like, no. Can I ask you a question? No. <laughs> she just walked up and started talking while he talking to them. <laughs> Y'all know how bad that sounds. God don't care how much you love him. He don't care how much you serve him. Why? Because he created you to kill you. He created you to have your blood in a bathtub so he could jump in and then take a bath. Um, Yo, that's the picture I get in my head when these guys say that God created people just to kill them. Just to hate them. Just to kill their children. Wow. Y'all, I don't want to serve a God. I would never serve a God like that. I would never serve a God like that. A God that created people just so he can kill their children? Even though their children were serving, well, yeah, you, know, you did serve me better than my own people did, but I didn't create you for, for, for to love you, so I have to kill you. Wow. Okay. Well, she's not really interrupting the word of God, the word of the Lord. She's really not because uh, you're teaching doctrines of devils. So, but anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all. Y'all, that's what Hebrew Israelites teach. Y'all, stay away from that doctrine, y'all. Don't make friends with these people that give the most high the characteristic of Satan. 
I know, I know we're trying to save some of these people, but you're going to have to save them from afar. The wicked and the righteous should not be mingling together like that. You got people that don't believe in Yehoshua. You got people blaspheming. And it's okay to break bread with these people? Really? The Bible says don't even eat with these people. You know, I, you know, I ran into a scripture. I ran into a scripture today that I want to share with you all. I think it's 1 Corinthians 1 19. Let me see. First Corinthians. Only a second. Only a second. I've been striking out lately. Yeah, First Corinthians eleven nineteen, not one nineteen, eleven nineteen. For yeah. there must also there must be also heresies among you. That they which are approved may be made manifest. How do you know the righteous people from the wicked people? Let a heresy break out. Let a heresy break out. Let a heresy break out. And guess what? You're going to see who. It says right here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.19. For there must also there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest of you among you. You see, so the people that uh, and it's another scripture I want to get to you in Titus. Oh boy, it cramps in my hand. Ugh. Let me see. Where is this at? You have Titus chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Don't keep breaking bread and visiting these people and smiling and laughing. And, no, and they don't believe in the most high. And giving them high accolades. Leave them alone. Don't the Bible tell us that in John 14? Let's, let's look at that. You know, the most High tells us to leave these people alone. And guess what we do? We have a fellowship dinner with them. It's like, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? He say one thing, we do another. Is it John 15? Maybe it's Matthew 14, 15. Let me see. Oh, Y'all, I'm sorry about today. I'm just butchering up all kind of stuff. John 4, 15, 14. Look what it says. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not plant shall be rooted up. Let them alone. Leave the tares alone. Leave them alone. They be blind leaders. Yeah, they leaders. Yeah, they, they know a lot of stuff, but he said, Leave them alone. Don't do no tributes to them. 
They be the blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Leave them alone. Okay, but that don't mean nothing because it's in the Bible. That's right. Yeah. I'm just wasting my time. But anyway, let me get out of here, y'all. This is Prophet Raw and I will be. I tried to help y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to plug people out of hell. It's hard though, but because people want to stay there. But anyway, y'all take it easy. Leave this. Let's stop. Just leave it alone. After the first and second admonition, leave them alone. Don't break bread with them. Don't invite them over to your house. Don't bid them Godspeed. Don't even say hello to them. Don't say shalom to them. Leave them alone. Don't call them. Leave them alone. Just leave them alone. You don't know them more than the Most High. And He can still save them. He said He told you to leave them alone, though. Okay, I'm out of here.